How do you build a supersonic fighter plane from scratch? The answer can be found at Abro on the edge of Malton Airport near Toronto. This is the Arrow, Canada's first supersonic all-weather plane. And the birth of the Arrow came only after fantastic effort and ingenuity. In many ways, the Arrow fathered its own assembly line. Two weeks ago, CBC News magazine brought you film of the first test flight. Now we go behind the assembly lines to see the birth of a supersonic plane and the birth pains of a production line. Exclusive to News Magazine, this is the first public showing anywhere of these previously secret films. The dart-shaped arrow began as a streamlined idea in 1951 for intercontinental defense. In theory, it was to be the highest flying and fastest plane ever built by anyone at any time, anywhere. Then, three years later, and a ton of blueprints later, the paper plane evolved into a miniature working model. Here in the wind tunnels, the arrow could have died at birth, but the tests and exhaustive analysis by electronic devices confirmed the aerodynamic theories of the men behind the drafting boards. Spin tests also proved the design was a sound one. Free flight was the next step. A somewhat larger and improved model was fired in the air by a rocket. The test models were rocket propelled to supersonic speeds to simulate flight conditions in a full scale aircraft. The models were instrumented to measure performance and stability and to transmit the information back to the ground station. The arrow grows. This plane will never fly. It is a wooden mock-up that duplicated the real plane down to the last rivet. The engineering mock-up provided a three-dimensional check on installation clearances and general accessibility. Meantime, the ways and means of producing the new plane were matching paces with the rapidly maturing aircraft. From standing start, the assembly line was developing. Each lesson that was learned from the wooden and later from the metal mock-up was taking form on the floor of the big Avro plant. The idea was fathered to the plane, and the aircraft was literally pulling itself up by its own technical bootstraps. The engineers at Avro experimented with new techniques, adapting plastics for insulation of the metal skin. Thus the metal that will enclose 38,000 parts is tested for strain inside and out. The metal is tortured in every way to show up the slightest weakness.
slowly the miles of wiring and thousands of parts are beginning to make sense and are passed down the line to the assembly bay. But first, everything is tested, preheated, cold and stress treated. For the arrow is expected to approach close to the heat barrier, man's next step toward the realm of outer space. the first production aircraft in production before it was flight tested. Careful planning made this possible. But while the arrow takes shape and the assembly lines grow, each step is recorded on IBM memory machines. And mistakes weren't allowed to filter down to the production line to other CF-105 aircraft. In the wake of first arrow along the production line, other sister aircraft, four of them will follow. They all resemble their earlier prototype but will be powered by the Canadian Iroquois jet engine and will outpace anything yet made in manned aircraft on either side of the Iron Curtain. Pilots were also taught the airborne characteristics of the plane even before it was out of the hangar. Even the ejection seat procedures, the pilot's light raft, were practiced long before the plane reached the first flight stage. Now, after seven years of planning and four years of work, 17,000 blueprints and $200 million, the Arrow is ready to fly. Now the racks come off the arrow. A calculated $200 million gamble leaves the ground to carry Canada into the supersonic age. Avro and Canadian engineers have proven they can make paper planes fly. <laughs> 